Hi guys, this is Richard Yi. Today is May twentieth, two thousand and eleven. May twentieth, five two zero. In Chinese, that means I love you. So um, here today I say, I love you. You know who you are. <laughs> um, well, back to the topic. <laughs> um, there's a big news this morning. Um, from the Chinese uh, financial community that the uh, Chinese central bank governor Zhou Xiaochuan and he made a statement that in the future China will allow the foreign financial transactions to be traded in Chinese yuan across the border. Well basically what this means is in the future um, say a Chinese manufacturer uh, he wants to buy um, say iron ore from Australia well he doesn't ha he doesn't have to um, like, like right now he doesn't have to uh, trans translate his Chinese yuan holding into a uh, US dollar and then use, use and then use that US dollar to buy um, the iron ore because the iron ore is priced in US dollar. Well, no longer that no longer is true because in the future um, that iron ore will be able to price in Chinese yuan and therefore the uh, manufacturers can directly buy this ore uh, with the price uh, of US uh, of Chinese yuan. Well. The most obvious objective of this uh, policy change is to uh, make RMB more international, so that in the future maybe uh, RMB can take over uh, U.S. dollar and become the uh, you know the world reserve currency. Well, <clears> that <throat> that's really meaningful to the world and uh, to the Chinese people because first. Uh, the world is going to have a more stabilized currency, unlike U.S. dollar, which, is, uh, which has been keep depreciating in the past in the past uh, two or three years. And since Chinese yuan is really stable, then uh, international trades can be um, you know better monitored, can be uh, business planning can be better done, and you know and uh, Chinese people can you know uh, take take advantage of this as well because as uh, people. As most people have confidence in the Chinese yuan and they're gonna buy into it, then Chinese people's purchasing power will increase as yuan appreciates, and therefore the Chinese people can import more goods from um, other nations. And I think that's definitely a positive move. But however, I don't think the policy makers, um, you know, the main objective is to uh, you know make uh, make make yuan more international. Well, if that's the case, then why don't they? Why haven't they done this in the past, where they got many chances? You know, why not in the past, but now, right? I think um, it, I think the main objective of their policy change is to uh, um, combat inflation, and in fact, um, I think that's the main reason they why they do it. I think uh, to make our Chinese yuan more internationalized is actually the second objective. So actually, they're doing a one rock, two birds strategy. Well, so how does um, the, the policy change like this uh, help the help China to combat inflation? Well, the reason is uh, actually quite, you know, obvious. Well, yeah, obvious, because China has an exporter economy and the U.S. has an import economy. So when China and the U.S. trade, China exports goods and the the U.S. exports. Uh, paper money to China, and since China and the U.S. has a packed really packed uh, currency, so the U the so the Chinese yuan is closely packed to the U.S. dollar. So whenever the U.S. the supply of U.S. dollar increases, the supply of Chinese yuan has to be increased to to match up that um gap, so that their um exchange rate can be maintained stable. Well, <clears throat> uh, therefore, in the past the financial crisis and the U.S. government, the U.S. government spent lots of money, and they increased the money supply by a lot, by two trillion. Therefore, that results in you know serious inflation in China. And now that inflation has uh, showed itself. The devil finally has shown itself. And uh, in the past two months, the Chinese inflation has been uh, at five percent for two months uh, compared to a year ago, and that's considered really serious inflation. So how does this uh, policy change, uh, my friends? So how does this uh, policy change kind of um, help the world economy? I mean, sorry, how does this policy change um, kind of help the Chinese to combat inflation? Well, first of all, since um, the Chinese they're allowed to trade the 
to buy stocks or to buy raw materials and do uh, international financial transactions in Chinese yuan. In a sense, the Chinese can buy goods or buy stuff from outside and kind of um, export the SS Chinese yuan in the in the country. So uh, if you imagine China as a huge swimming pool and the water inside is the money supply, and the cha then this change in policy is actually op opening the gate of the Chinese uh, inflation swimming pool. So gradually the water will leak out from the swimming pool, and you know gradually uh, sure the Chinese inflation will be under control. Uh, I think that's that definitely uh, positive for the Chinese economy. So um. <clears throat> If my analysis is correct, then in the future, Chinese yuan will uh, gradually appreciate as people you know, have faith in Chinese yuan and um, they believe it is a, it's a stable and honest currency, so people buy into it, that's going to appreciate. And you know, uh, many commentators, they say that, Chinese commentators mainly, they say that um, if Chinese yuan appreciate, it would be harder for the uh, Chinese to export and therefore um, it would cause um, you know, economic downturns in China. Well, that's true. Uh, if yuan appreciates, uh, since China has an export economy, if yuan appreciates, then sure, many people will lose, lose the job. But then, when you think about it, the reason why uh, China has such a you know export economy is because yuan has been devaluated, uh, has been undervalued in the in the past. So in a sense, the, the situation now China has is unsustainable because yuan cannot be uh, infinitely uh, undervalued as now. It has to be. Uh, start appreciating. So it's time for the change for the Chinese uh, uh, production structure. And I think rather than waiting to the you know to to later, why don't we change right now? Sure people will lose the job, but the earlier we change, the much better chances we have. And maybe if those people can find jobs in else uh, in elsewhere, maybe in the service sector, you know, China China doesn't have the some uh, strong service sector as the as compared to the U.S. So sure, maybe those people can go to the uh, Chinese service sector. You know, that's the good idea. And um, that's sure that's positive for the Chinese economy, in the, in the long run. And I think if my analysis is correct, then I think gold and silver uh, in the future, right, if they're gonna be priced in Chinese yuan, then there will be a less less favorable investments because the only reason why gold and silver are able to be so fluctuating, you know, have such a huge movements, <clears throat> is because they are priced in U.S. dollar, right? And U.S. dollar has been depreciating. Well. When U.S. dollar depreci depreciates, first that creates kind of fear in the uh, in the average investors and uh, average citizens that their um their saving has been vanished, their saving has been destroyed, and they better buy into uh, real commodities like gold and silver to protect their saving. That's the first reason why and gold and silver up has been rising. And secondly, um, you know, uh. If when inflation hits, um, price level will go up. When price price level go up, and all the goods, you know, including gold and silver, everything, the price of everything will go up. So th with this po two positive reasons, I think yes, gold and silver will go up because gold, gold and silver will go up if they are priced in U.S. dollar. But since you know in the future if they're priced in RMB or Chinese yuan, um, they will be less favorable. <clears throat> and hopefully, um. The world can return to a more to a more stable currency. And thank you for listening. And hopefully, I will be blogging again soon. Take care. Bye.